Enjoy early access to ad-free episodes each week when you subscribe to Wedding Planning Podcast Premium in Apple Podcasts. Enjoy the show. I have been so excited to share today's show with you. We are going to review some affordable options for your wedding flowers, including bouquets, centerpieces, and anything else that you might want to incorporate into your ceremony and or reception. And even better, the ideas we're talking about today can extend to any other special event that you're looking to decorate or make extra special. That's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Why, hello there, and welcome to today's episode all about wedding flowers. So excited to get into it. And of course, a huge thank you for spending a few moments of your day with me. I hope you're having a great week, and I hope everything is going smoothly with your wedding plans. We talk a lot here on the Wedding Planning Podcast about setting and honoring your top priorities. And if you're in the thick of researching and making big wedding decisions, then you know that actually setting and sticking to your priorities can be much easier said than done. The truth is we live in a world of social media and constant buzz from our friends, our family, and strangers on the internet who all have a million ideas of what your top priorities should be, along with all the irresistible photos, videos, reels, and montages of show-stopping weddings and bridal showers and rehearsals and on and on that are literally too good to be true. Notice I said literally and I really, really meant that. The reality is that over-the-top weddings that you're seeing on TikTok and Pinterest and Instagram that make you stop the scroll are likely not do-it-yourself affairs that cost a hundred bucks and a couple hours of crafting. That's not the reality. A floral arch alone can cost upwards of $10,000. That's probably on the cheap end, honestly. And if you have that kind of budget to work with and a floral arch is on your list of top priorities, then that's awesome. And if a floral arch is important to you and you can afford to do it, then by all means, absolutely. But if that's you, then you can also probably just go ahead and hire a wedding planner and an event designer team to make everything turn out fabulous money is no object, and you also probably don't need these free episodes of the Wedding Planning Podcast. A $10,000 floral arch is probably not reality for most of us who are actually working within a finite budget, and finite budgets call for a tight set of priorities so that you can get most of the things that you want the most. And that only works when you say no to the things that aren't that important to you. Now, if you know me, you know that I could blabber on and on about wedding priorities for the next 20 minutes, but maybe we'll do that another time because today we are here to talk about flowers and I'm leading the show talking about priorities because wedding flowers are really high on the list of things that couples report as being not really to not at all important to them. So in other words, for lots of couples, flowers just aren't that important, at least not so important that we need to be dedicating tens of thousands of dollars to it. So if you are nodding your head and agreeing with the not that important classification. And maybe you're falling somewhere between, you know, not that important to somewhat important, but you don't want to allocate a huge portion of your budget. Then what we're talking about today is a perfect roadmap for you to follow so that you can have beautiful top quality flowers for a really affordable price tag, which in my mind is just the best of both worlds. And the formula that I'm offering up today, it does not have to be just for your wedding. You can use the same exact guidelines for any event, including your engagement party, bridal shower, baby shower, birthday party. These ideas translate across to any special event that you'll host between now and your wedding and even beyond. 
So let's take our tried and true wedding planning podcast formula and let's explore how we can maximize the quality and value of your wedding flowers. We're going to be talking about bouquets, centerpieces, ceremony decor, boutonniere, toss petals, you name it. Today's conversation is going to focus a lot on how to effectively research and assemble things on your own, but please understand, keep in the back of your mind that a do-it-yourself approach does not have to be all or nothing, and we're going to talk much more about that coming up later in the show. So let's get right into five tips for success if you are considering doing some or all of your own wedding flower arrangements. To start us off, my first tip for success is to find yourself a floral wholesaler or a flower warehouse in your area. We are actually going to hop in the car and we're going to go shopping together at the flower warehouse that is near where I live. And we are going to walk through their cooler to talk about how to source and design professional worthy flowers and centerpiece decor. And we're going to do it at a fraction of the price of working with a professional florist. So let's get started and I'm going to set the scene and walk you through a tour of my local flower warehouse that's open to the public. I live in San Diego, California, and I feel so lucky to have this amazing resource just a few miles from my home. If you would like to find a wholesaler or a flower warehouse near you, I would start with a search for flower wholesale near me in your browser. And depending on your location, you should get at least a few options back. If you're in a more rural area and the closest option is an hour or more away, in my opinion, it's totally worth the trip if you are serious about doing some or all of your own flowers and wedding decor. So I would by all means make a Saturday or a Sunday out of it and hop in the car with a couple girlfriends or your mom whoever you want to take with you. These places are an invaluable resource and I totally think it's worth the time to drive even if you have to go an hour, an hour and change away. And then last thing I'll mention here is a farmer's market would also be a great resource and there are farmer's markets everywhere. So that's a good uh, thing to put on your list to explore as well. So as I go in to the flower warehouse, as I'm going to call it, we walk into the front section, which is all live plants, beautiful, a ton of floral containers and vases. And then there's a lot of seasonal decor usually set up here. And in terms of the actual decor, the containers, we can dive into that fun stuff on another show. For today, I'm going to head straight back to the live flower cooler, which by the way, is the size of my house. It's humongous. And you'll find lots of videos and photos from this little tour on a blog post that I made for today's show. And that's at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash flower. So let's go around in a circle and just kind of talk through what's available today. Eucalyptus, ferns, more ferns, some larger branches, which would make a great statement in a centerpiece on the table. And then again, the prices, $3.95, $4.49, $7.99 for a huge bunch of greenery. Okay, and now we're gonna shift over to roses. Every color you could imagine. These are packaged by the dozen or by the two dozen. And just to give you an idea here, two dozen roses, $15.95. That's like a dollar, 50 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents per stem. So affordable. And then they have a larger size that's $25 for two dozen. That's closer to a dollar per stem. I can't wait to share video of this, every color you could imagine, and they're so, so, so beautiful. We've also got a ton of baby eucalyptus, baby's breath, little pom poms that are super cute, lots of beautiful carnations, which can be a fake out for a peony depending on the size and the color that you're able to get your hands on. 
stargazer lilies are always good for big impact with not a lot of money. They're, the blooms are so big that they take up a lot of space in a vase. And same with hydrangeas. There are some good hydrangeas available today. Gladiolas are pretty if you're looking for height. Those are $12 for a really nice size bunch. And some pretty branches, dogwood branches and willows. Those are about $7 a bunch. Those would be beautiful for making a big impact if you're looking for more height in a centerpiece. With those options and price tags in mind, let's head back to the studio and I'm going to continue sharing my five secrets to do-it-yourself wedding flower success. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com and be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. So with those options and price tags in mind, let's head back to the studio and I'm going to continue sharing my five secrets to do-it-yourself wedding flower success. The first idea I have for you is to consider keeping it really green. The greenery that we saw in that cooler was incredibly affordable, and it's also got a lot of volume to it. So in other words, a little bit can go a long way just because it is so full and so big and so affordable. I also love keeping it green because it leads perfectly into my second tip for you, which is to keep it simple. So when we're just working with greenery, it's a very dramatic visual impact. You get a very beautiful result, but it's also very simple. When we do our own flowers and we are trying to assume the role of a professional florist, I see things kind of start to go south and start to get muddled up when we're using too many different kinds of flowers, too many different colors, too many different styles, trying to recreate that humongous, beautiful bouquet that you saw on Pinterest is probably not going to be as successful as it would be if you were to stick to one or two types of flowers and one or two colors max. So if you want the big elaborate bouquet, my advice would be to leave that to a professional. You by all means can try it out, test it. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But for a big elaborate bouquet, it's going to be a lot more difficult to recreate that than it would be to create a bouquet of just roses or just hydrangeas. So do with that what you will. And then my tip number three is to keep in mind your seasons. And I'm not going to go through winter, spring, summer, fall and list all the different types of flowers that are appropriate for every season. I do have a wonderful resource for you, though. It's in today's show notes, and it's a link to a seasonal flower guide. It even goes by month, I believe. So you can go ahead and dial right into the month that you're getting married, and that guide will let you know what flowers are most likely to be in season for that month. 
And then number four on our list for do-it-yourself flower success is you simply must plan this out in a very detailed and very organized way. And then you must test. You must test out your ideas. You have to experiment. You have to repeat. Flowers are hard to work with because they are very delicate. They have a very low shelf life in many or most cases, and they are pricey. So if you wait until the last day or two before your wedding to go out and buy 500 stems of XYZ flower, and then you're banking on the fact that they're still going to be fresh two days later, this is all getting into danger zone. And it can be avoided by testing out your ideas four to six weeks before the wedding. So we don't want to test them out too far in advance where you're looking for a seasonal flower that's not going to be available in, say, March, but you're getting married in July. So you might need to play with the timing on that a little bit. But the most important thing is that you get your hands on the actual flowers that you intend to work with. And you start to understand how long they last, how long can you keep them in a bucket of water before they start to droop? Is it one day? Is it three days? Is it a week? I love working with roses because they are pretty hardy, relatively speaking. And with roses, I find that I get the best result after five to seven to 10 days. And that's because the flowers really relax They really start to open up and they really take on a beautiful fullness. But that's not going to be the case with every type of flower. So you need to understand how they're going to behave in what types of time frames. And then my fifth idea here, tip for you, is that there is absolutely no shame in turning to a big box store to do your wedding flowers. I am all about maximizing the quality and the value of every single wedding decision that you make. And what better way to do that than with Costco, one of my personal all-time favorite stores in the world. Now, it's no secret that Costco sells fresh flower bouquets in their warehouses, and they have some pretty impressive seasonal offerings for holidays like Christmas, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, etc., But did you know that you can also pre-order wedding flowers? And that includes everything from bouquets, centerpieces, plain rose petals, the whole deal. They have a few options for ready-made sets that are specifically designed for weddings. And they also have flower stems in bulk if you'd like to go that route and just kind of assemble things on your own. I'm going to kind of outline just so you have a really solid idea of what's available. I'm going to outline a 20 piece wedding collection. So a 20 piece wedding collection from Costco includes one bridal bouquet. And then they actually have listed out here, like specifically how many of every kind of flower you're going to get in that. I won't go that far, but I will link to it so that you can look on your own if you'd like one bridal bouquet three bridesmaids bouquets, two centerpieces, the vase is not included, six pin-on corsages, six boutonnieres, one toss-away bouquet, and one bag of loose rose petals. So that package, 20 pieces, is $530, and yes, that includes shipping. My one observation there is two centerpieces. I don't know who, I won't say most, I think many of us would need more than two centerpieces. So that's where the option to purchase just the stems alone would come in. Or you could go ahead and just a la carte order some separate uh, centerpiece arrangements, which is also an option. So if you're looking to just purchase stems, I looked in real time right before I recorded, right before I'm recording this, I should say. And I see roses, Gerbera daisies, hydrangea stems, uh, in addition to lots more. And all of those are about $1 per stem. Hydrangeas are humongous. 
So to pay $1 for one stem of hydrangea, that is an incredible value. Roses, again, the roses from Costco are always amazing quality. So to get a beautiful full rose for $1, it's a great bargain. Uh, I will share a photo of a 20 stem rose wedding bouquet on the blog post for today so that you can see yourself how beautiful a $20 bouquet can actually look. And I will put a link to that blog post in today's show notes. So we talked a lot today about sourcing and arranging flowers on your own, but I want to reiterate a point that I made at the very beginning of the show, which is that do-it-yourself flowers does not have to be an all-or-nothing situation. I really love the idea of hiring a florist to make and deliver your bouquets and your boutonnieres, and then doing the larger centerpiece arrangements on your own using wholesale flowers like we just discussed, Or you could flip that. You could do your own bouquets and then have a florist make you the arrangements to deliver. If you do wind up working with a professional for some or all of your flowers and you still want to keep this budget item as affordable as possible, I would suggest keeping simplicity top of mind and then shop around for a few different quotes to see what kind of pricing and package options are available in your area. And you do not need to just gravitate straight towards a, quote, wedding florist. Many farmers markets will have vendors who can do arrangements just absolutely beautifully and offer delivery services as well. So keep your mind open to that possibility. I'll mention here as well at the flower warehouse that we toured, they do have a whole side section of the business that does arrangements for you. So walking in and buying wholesale and doing it yourself is an option, but it's also an option to have them kind of facilitate everything. And then the pricing structure is similar to a wedding florist. It might be a little bit lower. I can't give like specifics for every area, every marketplace, every wholesaler. It varies a lot. So just do your research And to close out the show with a teaser, next week I'm going to share all of your questions about wedding flowers that you sent in, and we're going to talk about timing for when you should buy and arrange everything, concerns about buying blooms online, the times that you should work with a professional florist, and also some of the top wedding flower mistakes that I see couples make. It's a jam-packed show, and it's going to be a good one. I'm really excited to share that one with you as well. And for now, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Our website has a contact form, and you can find that at weddingplanningpodcast.co. You can also find me on Instagram, where I will share a ton of wedding flower pictures. Just look for Wedding Planning Podcast. That's all one word. All right, I will meet you here again next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For episode recaps and special offers, visit our website at wedpodcast.com. There you'll also find a link to submit your wedding questions and future show topic requests. Follow us wherever you listen for new episodes every Wednesday. And if you're loving the podcast, please leave a five-star rating and review to share your favorite episodes and thoughts with other couples. Wishing you a happy engagement. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. And we'll talk again next week, same time, same place.